Hello, and a very good morning from the Polish city of Gdynia and the apartment I've been staying in, which is uh, cost me the equivalent of £13 a night. Now today, I'll be travelling down to uh, the capital Warsaw with the Polish national operator PKP Intercity. Now, I'll be travelling aboard one of their TLK services today, which is sort of the lowest level of long-distance train. Um, should be a nice little ride down there. Um, obviously, I took one of these services last year, as some of you may remember. Um, I'm just about to head down to the uh, station here in Gdynia, it's just a short walk from my apartment, and yeah, let's go to Warsaw. Gdynia Glovna, or Gdynia Main Station, is located just to the west of the city centre and originally opened in 1884. The current station building dates back to the 1950s and was constructed to replace its predecessor, which was unfortunately destroyed during the Second World War. Now, when I visited the station, it was very early, about quarter past five in the morning to be exact, so pretty much everything in the way of shops and restaurants was still closed. But if you do find yourself here later in the day, the selection is pretty good considering the size of the station, with notable places to grab a bite to eat including McDonald's and Subway. It's also worth bearing in mind that catering on TLK services is somewhat limited, if there is any at all that is, so I'd strongly recommend picking up something before starting a long journey on one of these trains. There are also plenty of ticket sales counters within the station itself, although again, closed at this ungodly hour. However, it is also possible to do as I have and buy your ticket online and just display your ticket as a PDF on your phone. Anyway, time to head up to the platform and await the arrival of our ride to Warsaw. The platforms are accessible by this passageway which runs beneath the tracks. Both stairs and lifts are provided to take you up to track level. We'll be departing from platform 4, track 7 today. The service we'll be catching is the 0540, train number TLK 53100. The just under 4 hours we'll be spending on this train is actually just a relatively small portion of its overall journey to Zakopane, down near the border with Slovakia. It'll take it the better part of 12 hours to get there. On the opposite track to where our train will be departing, one of PKP Intercity's flagship Express Intercity Premium New Pendolinos awaits its departure to Krakow, also via Warsaw. These trains are quicker and offer a much higher level of comfort than the TLK train will be taking, although naturally the fare is also quite a bit higher too. The EIP trains only take around 3 hours to travel between here and the Polish capital, as opposed to around 3 and 3 quarter hours for TLK trains. TLK trains are all locomotive hauled, with our rake of coaches being hauled by an EP09 electric locomotive. 47 of these were built by manufacturer Pafavag between 1986 and 1997, and they have a top speed of 160 km an hour or 99 miles per hour. TLK trains are generally made up of older coaches that have cascaded down as newer and refurbished coaches have taken their place on intercity services. All of today's coaches date from between 1969 and 1989. Oh, and if you're wondering what TLK stands for, well, I'll spare you having to listen to me butcher its pronunciation. But it translates into English as Your Railway Lines. Anyway, let's get on board. I've booked a second class ticket today and have been allocated Coach 11, Seat 51, which is a window seat in the open saloon. As it would appear that no one has bothered to turn on the lights yet, I have to use the torch on my phone to try and find my way to my seat. Now 
With the lights now on, we're very much ready for departure. But before we set off, let's just take a quick look at our route for today. Our route today will see us heading south, southeast, via the likes of Gdansk, Ilwava and Moava, before arriving into Warsaw Central Station, where we're scheduled to arrive at 0925. Total distance to the Polish capital is 357 kilometers or 222 miles. Scheduled travel time today is 3 hours and 45 minutes and our top speed will be 160 kilometers an hour. And we depart Gdynia on time. The first portion of our trip sees us making a number of stops in quick succession as we travel through the densely populated corridor between Gdynia and Gdansk. A lot of people join the train at Gdansk Glovny. If you've never been to Gdansk, well, I'd highly recommend visiting at some point. The city is beautiful and has an extensive old town area for you to explore. Gdansk is the largest city in northern Poland and the country's main port city. Once out of Gdansk, we pick up the pace as the sun begins to rise over the Polish countryside. Now that we're on our way, let's take a quick look at what these seats have to offer. Well, as you might have expected, they're pretty basic, but nonetheless, legroom is really good in my opinion. A seat back pocket and this rather questionable tray table can be found at most seats. A litter bin is also provided by the window seat. I actually found the seats themselves to be pretty comfortable. They offer a good amount of padding and the headrests really add to the overall comfort in my opinion. And rounding off the features, there's also a window blind and a reading light which didn't work. It's also worth noting the lack of plug sockets. While not exactly surprising, you're going to want to remember to pack your power bank. Our next stop is Czechev. This city plays an important role in Poland's railways, being both a major railway junction and home to freight marshalling yards. Shortly after departing to Czech, we cross the Vistula River, which at 1047 kilometers or 651 miles long, is the longest river in Poland. Adjacent to the railway bridge, we can see the road bridge, which has been undergoing major renovation works since 2015. On the approach to Malbork, we pass Malbork Castle, which dates all the way back to the 13th century, and covering an area of 143,591 square metres, or 1,545,601 square feet, is the largest castle in the world in terms of land area. It was designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1997.
We soon find ourselves slowing to barely even a trundle for quite some time. There wasn't any explanation given for this and it can't have been timetabled as we picked up about 20 minutes of delay here. Approaching the halfway point of the journey, we arrive in Iwava. The town is located at the southern end of Lake Ijarak, which at 27.45 kilometers, or 17.05 miles long, is the longest lake in Poland. Longest lake and river covered in the same video, <laughs> don't say I'm not good to you. About an hour later, we arrive in Moava, a predominantly industrial town home to around 30,000 people. The town used to be the western terminus of the Moava commuter railway, which was a narrow gauge line that ran from here for 74 kilometers or 46 miles to Marko Mazoveski. It was built in just a matter of weeks by the Germans in World War I, and while it closed in 1987, a 12 kilometer section has since been restored and preserved. Anyway, as we're now fast closing in on the Polish capital, I think it's about time we went for a wonder, and what better place to start than the best window on any classic local hall train, am I right? While most of the train is made up of compartment seating, there are a couple of second class open saloon coaches, such as this one and the one my seat is in. These all feature airline style seating in a 2 plus 2 configuration. The open saloon coaches also feature 6 bicycle spaces, 3 in each vestibule. While it wouldn't appear that spaces need to be reserved, at least according to PKP Intercity's website. A bicycle ticket is required and costs a flat fee of 9 zloty 10. As I mentioned a moment ago, the majority of the seats on this train are in compartments. The second class compartments are designed to accommodate up to 8 people, with seats being in a sort of bench style layout. I can imagine that these compartments would feel very cramped if they were full, as they often are, as there doesn't appear to be much leg space between the seats. There was one first class coach included in the consist on this train. Well unfortunately all the compartments were occupied so I couldn't show you one. These each feature six seats. It also smelt as though someone had been smoking in this coach and trust me the conductor was far from pleased by this development. Toilets can be found in the vestibules and while they're hardly going to win a Lou of the Year award, they were perfectly fine being nice and clean, well stocked and, you guessed it, in good working order. And that's about it for this train, and note that unlike on other intercity trains in Poland, 
There's unfortunately no Vaz dining car included in the consist, which, trust me, is sorely missed. And lastly, another thing that doesn't really come as much of a surprise to me, this train is not Wi-Fi enabled. Anyway, we're now just pulling into Novodur Mazovetsky, which is just over half an hour away from Warsaw Central Station, and signifies the beginning of the end of our journey today. So, to summarise my experience today, while pretty basic, I found that these trains were comfortable enough for the near 4 hour journey down from Gdynia. While they do lack a lot of modern amenities such as plug sockets and Wi-Fi, they offer a smooth and pleasant ride. That said, I can't say I'd want to spend 12 hours on one of these trains. Another thing that this service has got going for it is the price. I paid just 44 zloty 80 for my ticket, booking around 4 weeks in advance. That's about £8.25, $11.30 or €9.85. Even by Central Europe standards, that is very cheap in my opinion. All things considered, I have no issues with recommending TLK services as a good way of travelling around Poland. The fares are generally pretty cheap, although if you can, perhaps try travelling on an intercity service, as the fares here are generally the same and the level of comfort provided is usually much higher. Anyway, I'm interested to know what you made of today's journey. Be sure to let me know in the comments below. We eventually arrive at Warsaw East Station, which is our first calling point in the Polish capital. Between Warsaw East and Central, we once again find ourselves crossing the Vistula River. We then enter tunnels for the final few minutes of our trip as we make our way into central Warsaw. And we arrive into Wasawa Centralna around 20 minutes late at 20 to 10. With that, I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to help us out by giving it a like. If you're new to the channel, then you're going to want to subscribe and enable notifications as I publish new trip reports every Monday and Friday. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you on Monday.